<laughs> we are outside of Hush and Hell's Kitchen. Who do I have with me? What is your name? I am Nani Tsunami, drag entertainer, convicted felon, and mother of five. What are your pronouns in and out of drag? Baby, it is the she and the her exclusive. How'd you get your drag name? So, uh, fun fact, my first name is a childhood nickname, and I got Tsunami from this random Katy Perry song. And it just so happened to be a rhymey, rhymey situation. I, okay, so one of my favorite toys growing up was Betty Spaghetti. Uh -huh. I love the cadence of like, Betty Spaghetti. Yeah, yeah. And Nani Tsunami just fit. So I love it. Uh, current age and how long have you been doing drag? Ooh, girl. Current age, um, redacted. How long have you been doing drag? I have been doing drag for two years as of a week and a half ago. Where did you grow up? I am a Harlem born, Bronx raised, New York native. What is your astrology big three? Uh, ooh, let me see if I remember this. I'm a little drunk. Um, <laughs> I am a Taurus sun. Mm -hmm. That's the month that you were born in, right? I am an Aries moon and a Sagittarius rising. Who's inspired you the most in your drag career? Who's inspired me the most? Um, Can be pop icons, family, I'm completely, or... I'm honest with you. I feel like I am a mixture of like Aunt Viv from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and JT from The City Girls. <laughs> um, what has been your favorite city or borough to perform in? Um, okay, fun fact. I actually just came from Troop 429 in Connecticut. Shout out to Troop. Yeah. And baby, you want a bar with a great stage. You want a bar with great lighting. You want a place that's going to take care of the girls. Yeah. Norwalk, Connecticut is giving us. Yeah, I love performing outside of the city. It's like, wait, you have a dressing room? Wait, you have a stage? Right. It's crazy. Girl, you're not getting ready in like a bathroom rifling through a oh, bag. Yeah. It's and nice. It's luxurious. It's coke on the floor. Yeah. That you're taking for your own. I mean, not me. You can never be me. But, you know. Uh, what's your current obsession? My current obsession. Um, what is going on with me? What is my current obsession? Any TV shows you're binging right now? Or uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Any new restaurants? My current obsession is Coco Jones. Coco what? Jones and Justine Sky. What does Pride Month mean to you? Pride Month means, first of all, fuck rainbow capitalism. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not going to support us all fucking year, then you're not going to support us during June. That shit is mm -hmm. bullshit. Um, Pride Month means community. Pride Month means um, inclusivity. Pride Month means sticking together. Pride Month means embracing who you are, embracing all the parts of yourself that you're ashamed of, letting that shit shine, because those are some of the most beautiful parts of you. And once you accept what you can't change and change what you can or want to, you'll find that you become the image of your own imagination. And that is one of the greatest joys in your life. Choice. I love that. That was so good. <laughs> um, when did you join House of Cummings? Um, so uh, I think I joined, I want to say September of 2021. Mm -hmm. I, someone else asked for me to be in the house and Marty kind of gave me a look. She probably doesn't remember this. She gave me a look and just gave me like a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, come on thank in. Thank you, you're in. What was the moment uh, where you kind of decided or realized that drag was for you? Oh, Was there a defining baby. moment? Let me tell you this story. So I was at Hardware Bar, I will never forget. It was a show called Fantasy Fridays. It was Jasmine Rice LaVeja, Jasmine Kennedy and Izzy Uncut, and Britta was there. Britta was there in the audience, and they shouted her out, and she stood up, and the love that they gave her in the way to room like erupted when she just kind of like stood up and gave them like a hello. Yeah. I turned to my friend who was right next to me and I was like, I'm gonna do drag. Yeah. I'm gonna do drag. That level of like community, that level of like love that somebody received. Cause Britta's been the face of like New York City drag for years. Like shout out to Britta Filter. She is the one, period. Mm -hmm. But um, after seeing that, I was like, I'm gonna do fucking drag. And then a couple years later I started and I, I some semi get that now, but like I'm really I'm really working towards being the best drag entertainer I could possibly. Yeah. Um, so it is Pride Month. We get a lot of questions from straight people who want to know more about drag. Um, I get this one a lot. Just wanted to get uh, your thoughts on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Asking if cis women can do drag, if trans people can do drag, um, and. 
what do you usually respond to those kinds of questions with? First of all, drag is for everybody and drag is for anybody. You're doing drag right now. Yes, we are. I'm doing drag. This person over here crossing the street is doing drag. Because drag is what you put on. Mm -hmm. Drag is what you put on for the day. And drag, like I said earlier, is becoming the image of your own imagination. It can be whatever t-shirt you want to wear, whatever pair of shorts or pants or whatever the fuck you want to wear. It's imagining yourself as your best self or whatever your best self is at the moment that can be a t-shirt and jeans and getting out of bed and looking at yourself in the mirror and going i'm gonna conquer to get that's who you drive baby and at the end of the day that's something that everybody needs and everybody goes 100 so drag is for absolutely everybody and speaking as a trans person doing drag baby if it if it if it can't be for me then it has to be right uh, I did Janae's interview last week. She told me you were Who's the that? person she did. <laughs> New queen, love her. <laughs> Baby, she's a, a drag wars girly. Ah! Um, <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> um, she told us that you are the person she tells all of her secrets to. Yes. Um, how'd y'all get so close? We So we knew each other before either of us started drag. Mm -hmm. Well, either of us started drag professionally, I'll say. I don't want to redact everything I just said. Right. But before either of us did drag professionally, I, I'm sweaty as hell. Don't get any ideas. Um, before either of us did drag professionally, we knew each other and we became friends and then reconnected through drag and then through the pandemic, our bond got stronger because we, like, we talked over the phone about drag and whatnot and what have you, shared our ideas. And we've become super, super close, and that—that that is also someone that like, she knows. She knows my deepest, darkest. She's probably yeah. seen me. She's seen me at my worst. She's seen me without makeup. Like on. definition of ride or die. Yeah, she's seen me without makeup on. That listen, that girl has chased someone who's robbed me. That's someone that I owe a lot more than just like uh, she's my sister too. That bitch is really like down for it. Uh, you, you've also created shows together like Cookout. Uh, what's been yes. your favorite show you have worked on uh, with her? The highlight of my drag career has to be my show Girl on Girl at Every mm -hmm. second Tuesday of the month, come on out. Um, I love getting the chance to give new performers a platform, give new performers a chance to work on their mic skills. I mean, how many times have you guested for someone? And like, it's a fun event and it's a fun time, but like, you kind of come do your number, plug your Instagram, and like fuck off until your next. Yeah, number. totally, hundred percent. And there's so many people that don't get the opportunity to like see what their hosting style is, see what their mic skills are until they're years into their drag career because they've gone years of just guesting and whatnot. Yeah. So I love giving new girls a chance to like get on the mic, do the things that they want to do, test their shit out, and really like give it. It's been super successful. We're celebrating six months mm -hmm. of doing this show, and honestly, it's, it's really become one of the like great joys of my monthly schedule and just the one. One of the highlights of my drag career. I love it so much. You also have a drag kid who I've worked with at Queen and Astoria, Max. Uh, several, uh, actually. Several. Yes, I do. Oh. Uh, well, I've worked with Max. Yes, Max. Uh, you know I mean? That is my my firstborn. That's what I thought. I love her so much. Who are your other kids? Okay, so I am. I'm currently in a custody battle mm -hmm. with a uh, delicious Kennedy Tsunami. Delicious, I love her. Shout out to her, that's my baby. Um, Steven, my, my baby boy, I love him so much. The man of the house. Um, and also Luna C, who is absolutely incredible. Follow her on all platforms. Follow Delicious on all platforms. Delicious NYC, if I'm not mistaken. Luna underscore C X, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. And the Max Tsunami all on Instagram. They're absolutely incredible. I love them. I have a couple of girls that I'm kind of talking to in talks with to, to join the collective. I like to think of my house more of as a collective as, yeah. like, as opposed to like a house house because there are skills that not only that, not only I can learn from, but things that they can teach each other. Luna is excellent at sewing. Some of her costumes are some of the best things I've seen from newer girls. Max is an excellent performer. Delicious is an excellent host. Um, and I, as far as I know right now, am the makeup girl mm -hmm. of the house. I'm very like beauty focused, but I can also like do other things and like yeah. help them achieve things that are outside of the realm of just beauty. But beauty is like my area of expertise. Totally. So like we all have skills that we can kind of teach each other. I also sew. I sew everything that you see. You can tell by some of the mistakes on this garment, but don't shout me out. Um, keep the comments cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I love those. Things. I love that. I love that way of thinking of, you know, it's just yeah. like we're all in a group learning together, growing together. So, um, how long does it take you to get ready? Ooh. Um, 
okay, so I have three scenarios. I have what I call my three different faces. Mm -hmm. I have the like, you can kind of languish, you can kind of put a candle on, put on some music, and that's my like three hours. We're gonna stone the eyes, we're gonna, the blush is placed just right, the lip is placed just right. I have my like business face, which is this. This is my like, okay, you got about 45 minutes, get up, get to the gig, do the thing. And then I have what I call the bare minimum, like the essentials. Mm -hmm. And that is what I would call my like, Ulta girl brown smoky eye, cute little nude lip, a human hair wig and get out the door. And that I can do in maybe about 25, 30 minutes. When did you come out? What are you trying to say? <laughs> come out as what? Come out in general, um, as queer, as... So I came out when, before, I, before I started my journey. Mm -hmm. um, I came out as a queer person my very first day of college, mm -hmm. um, to my parents at least. My friends knew, girl, it was given. I was given, I was screaming deja vu yeah. by Beyonce and Jay-Z to the top of my lungs in like ninth grade. Yeah, okay. the girlies knew. Um, I came out as a drag queen in 2020, but I don't count that. I don't count officially being a working drag queen until 2021. On my trans journey about six months ago. What would you say to someone who is struggling to come out? There is a community of people who are absolutely ready and willing to embrace you, mm -hmm. ready and willing to support you, love on you the way that you need to be loved, hear you to hear the way that you need to be loved, because sometimes you have to tell them. Yeah. Nothing, no one's a mind reader um, yet. But, you know, there, there are a plethora of people who are out here to love on you the way that you need to be loved and see you in the way that you want to be seen. Yeah. So even if it's not necessarily coming out to your parents, coming out to your family, coming out to biological family or whatever the case may be, there yeah. is a group of people that you will end up choosing as your chosen family who are going to be your rock star. Eventually, hopefully, the goal is to not have to come out. <laughs> um, like, I don't know if that'll ever be in reality if people can know. just, like, I exist. Know. I think, but... listen, I know that there are people who think that labels shouldn't exist, but I think that labels help people find you. A hundred percent. I am. For example, I, I like to look at it in the terms of, like, colors. Yeah. There are... For example, the color purple. Purple purple's my favorite color. Mm -hmm. But there are purples that are more red than blue. There are purples that are more blue than red. Mm -hmm. And you may say, hey, I'm a purple. I am a purple, but I'm a blue purple. And I want to get guidance on my journey as a blue purple. And you find other blue purples who identify as blue purple. So you get what yeah, I'm saying? Totally, yeah. And they're, you know, on the opposite side of that spectrum, you may say, I'm a red purple and I need guidance from other red purples yeah and you find your guidance in your community in those red purples of course you associate with the blue purples and the other colors and whatnot and what have you but the intersectionality that label of it. Yeah, and that yeah. identification can help you find community and people that share your experience. totally when it comes to dating and relationships what qualities do you look for in a partner smart funny Affectionate, I'm a mushy bitch. I'm a mushy bitch. Kiss on, kiss me, hug me, love on me, damn it. Because once I'm that type of person, once you show me that you're interested in that, the floodgates open and it is a wrap. So, yeah, smart, funny, affectionate, emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. Girl, in the year of our Lord 2023, I don't have time for nobody not taking accountability. I don't have time for people who don't understand people's wants and needs. I had a teacher who told me. The essence of humanity is the desire to be seen and heard, and that shit shook me to my motherfucking core. And I live for that. There's a bike coming of me. Did the Hi, Korma. Um, <laughs> that shook me to my core, and that is something that I lead with when I try my best to understand people. And in, in any situation, be it an argument, be it a friend trying to tell me something that they're going through, anything like that the essence of humanity is the desire to be seen and heard and that's something that i always try to lead with like seeing and hearing someone so i need i need someone who's going to be able to see me what's the first thing you do when you sit down to get into face your first step of your process um i try to visualize okay it's gonna sound a little basic <laughs> judge you i go through my phone because i have 
a folder of inspo of like faces, looks, like eyes, eye stuff, lip stuff, whatever the case may be. Um, and I go through the form and I go, okay, I want my eyes to get that, but I want my eyes to get that in this color. Mm -hmm. And then I put on primer, put on my foundation and take it from there. What's the last thing you do before you go on stage? I, this is going to sound so fucking corny and it's going to unleash my inner like 13 year old. <laughs> I pray to all the cheat delicious divas who came before me to use my heart, my talents, and my body to convey whatever emotions that I'm trying to convey and help people escape whatever it is that they're going through for that three to five minutes that I'm doing that number seven minutes if, if it's my Whitney number. But um, help people escape and, and feel good for however, whatever length of time I'm on stage. What's your favorite holiday? Any holiday I can eat at. Baby, give me, give me a Thanksgiving, give me a Fourth of July, give me a, give me any holiday where somebody is making a meal and I can sit back and make a plate. Any fun plans for the rest of the summer? Uh, after Pride, after the Pride season? So I down. am super obsessed with getting to know my drag children on a deeper level. I want to spend the rest of the summer really getting to know them individually, really getting to know their talents, really helping them develop, mm -hmm. and really fostering community in that. Yeah, you take a little drag family retreat. Oh, absolutely. Be so just Even no phones, listen, just like people, go to the middle of the woods for like a week. A, the woods? Oh yes, the woods. Baby, I don't know if you know this, but You I'm said, black. okay, let's go to a Sephora. I said, baby, let me, I don't know if you know this, but I'm black, me and the woods don't. I said, hold on a minute. I was I born said, and raised in the woods, I'm <laughs> like, that's home to me. I said, I love that freedom, <laughs> but if I, hear it, if I hear a noise in a cabin, get the car, really. <laughs> um, one country or city you want to visit? Spain. Spain or England. What can we expect from a Nani Tsunami show? Um, you can expect sexy, you can expect personality, you can expect comedy, um, you can expect kindness. Mm -hmm. I try my best to not be an insult comic, an insult person. I try my best to like, I want the girls that I do shows with to walk away going, I had so much fun. Yeah. And I want the people who see my show to walk away and go, I had so much fun watching. Other than Janae and your family, who are some of your favorite entertainers to work with? Oh, huh. how much time do you have? Not a lot. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll give you I'll give you the cliff notes. First and foremost, Essence is one of the best entertainers Tea. in New York City. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. Argue with your mama. Argue with your mama. Tea. Essence is one of the best people I've ever seen and worked with. Marie is one of the best people I've ever seen and worked with. Um, I love working with Soraya D. I love working with Anita D. Um, I love working with, oh, I haven't worked with her yet. I really want to work with Essa Noche. I think mm -hmm. she's everything. Um, I think Lana Jure is everything. Dev Doe is everything. Um, who else? Um, uh, I didn't name anybody in my drag family. <laughs> I said aside from family in the question, so um, you're good, you're good. Who else is someone that's like everything, everything, everything? Um, the names are Bojangles. Bojangles is so fucking funny. That is a girl, you wanna see a girl, you wanna see a master class in captivating an audience. I've seen that girl move her hips in nothing but a, like a dental floss bikini and some oil and I will give her whatever amount of money is in my pocket. She is so <laughs> captivating. She is so fucking gorgeous. And she's so entertaining. She's just, she's a fun girl. I love her. What are your, who are your top three pop stars? Uh, I'm a Beyonce girl. Everybody else is obscure. I'm a Beyonce girl. I'm a Justine Sky girl. Um, and Monica. Monica's my, Monica's been my girl since before there ever was a Beyonce. Uh, what do you have to say to the individuals stating that trans lives should be eradicated? Fuck you. And fuck you. You don't even have to finish that question. Let me tell you something about yourself. You don't know what the fuck we go through. You don't know who we are personally on any sort of level. Fuck you. You just want to have some sort of control and some sort of power by subjugating a group of people. Fuck that bullshit. Learn to love your goddamn self. There you go. Have you ever done a drag story hour? 
Not yet. Would you ever want to do it? Um, it depends on the story. Mm -hmm. It depends on the story. What is your biggest fear? Um, hmm. I am a crazy claustrophobe. So like getting stuck in an elevator, totally getting get stuck that. in anywhere that I cannot escape. What is your best way to get over nerves if you're feeling nervous? Uh, breathe. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Breathe and remember that whoever is out there to watch you do whatever it is because it's usually performance. Um, whoever is out there is a group of people that want to see you succeed. Best piece of advice you can offer a queer person thinking about starting drag? Do it. Just any, do it. Any future projects you can share? Um, uh, this will come out, I think, next week, so... Like a, a week left of Pride, I think. I <laughs> go, are the NDAs up? Um, <laughs> I, oh, I'm doing a house tsunami show soon. I'm gonna be revealing all of my daughters. We're gonna be, we're gonna plan a whole photo shoot. It's gonna be a whole cute thing. Um, I have more daughters than just who I named, but I want mm -hmm. that to be a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, totally. Um, and where can everyone see you regularly? Baby, I am shows. here at Hush every Sunday, 9 p.m. sharp at the cookout. You can catch me bi-weekly at Rock Bar, co-hosting with Vanity LeVayne. Vanity LeVayne, my goodness. I'm a little drunk. <laughs> um, I am at Rock Bar, co-hosting with Vanity LeVayne at No Vain No Gain. And I am at Verse Bar, monthly for Girl on Girl. And where can everybody follow you? Baby, you can find me at The Nani Tsunami. It is The Nani Tsunami on any pro platform that you can imagine. It is on Instagram, it is on Venmo, it is on Twitter, it is on, ooh, I was about to name something that was redacted. But if you look there, you might find me. Awesome, I've loved chatting with you and I can't wait to see your family thank announcement you. in a couple weeks. Um, happy Pride. Thank you so much. And bye Hush. And thank you for the lightning, Tariq. <laughs>